Blinky Alive is, is all about talking to industry thought leaders and talking about driving change, and especially when they have an expertise in influencer marketing. And so I am super excited to introduce you to Amisha Gandhi, who is a VP of Influencer Marketing and Communications at SAP. Uh, uh, Amisha has been in leadership roles at, at the SAP for over 10 years. And she's also just recently been PR Week's, one of PR Week's Women to Watch in 2020. First up is, you know, what is the outcome? What is it that you hope to achieve for your business through influencer marketing that you can't with what you're doing now? So you have to have the why, why now, and then the what you're gonna do, and then the who, the who comes after all of that. I think a lot of people look at like, oh, who's the influencer we can work with, and now we're gonna do this asset, and here's what we hope to achieve. Think about what you want to achieve and what the impact is going to be to the business and then structure your program around that and all these other pieces will come in and then you have a very light, you know, it's like a, a proposal almost and you create a proposal and say, if we do this, this is what we'll achieve and we're not able to achieve that through anything else we're doing currently. And if you are able to present it that way, that will get somebody's interest and say, here's a recommended pilot. I found that if you say it's a pilot, people are more listen, willing to listen. So when you think of influencer marketing, right? When we think of that, a lot of people think of influencer relations and influencer marketing. What I'm really referring to influencer marketing, it's taking the practice of those external influencers, bringing them in and co-creating content with them, bringing them into your ABM program, bringing them as speakers, bringing them to events, but it's you know kind of embedded into your customer journey, which we know is now like shoots and ladders, right? It's not as linear, especially in B2B, as it used to be. You're, we're talk, you're talking about capitalizing on a kind of a, a very kind of contemporary thought on influencer marketing, which is the, the value of the content itself, right? So oftentimes people use influencer as just a tactic with a kind of campaign metric and that was the extent of it, where if you really think about it thoughtfully, the real business gain is in the, the, the general uplift of the content you get and the value of that. So you came on that very naturally, very early, early on as the actual value of these influencer programs. Does that sound about right? Yeah, and so, I mean, I think it's because I had done these other programs on the B2C side, right, and seen the value and so, you know, I had gone out to see who else had done it because a lot of times when you're trying to sell in an idea, you want to show success elsewhere. And there wasn't really a lot on the B2B side that showed deeper than some social media at events, right, at that time. So this was kind of, that's why it was called a pilot, right, to see, I was like, well, this could work or it could be a complete disaster and we'll do something else, right? So I think, you know, a lot of people say, oh, look at social media and, and views and things like that, I think, and likes and share. I think that's all fine, but I think a lot of executives now view that as vanity metrics, right? What does that really, I mean, something can be seen so many times, but then yeah. how much website traffic did we get? How many people clicked on the link? So when people came in, we did this launch of Leonardo, we had 32 influencers in this ebook asset, and it was, a, it was very successful because we did it at an event, we launched it with influencers, got a lot of buzz from the influencers themselves who were on-site and off-site, right? We, big boom. And then we kind of had a funnel to kind of keep the interest going with programming to like re-amplify the asset. And we found that, you know, we had people. So then we were able to get who came. Okay. This is how many times it was shared. This is who came to the website. And these are the links by the influence, which influencers drove the most, right? Traffic, who came in and then who signed, then who signed up for the research paper, on the B2C side, it's it's more headed towards advertising and media buys with influencers, whereas B2B, it's a little bit different because we don't work with that, you know, you know, many to one, it's more, you know, one to one. Um, so we definitely look at that and see what content is being made, what platforms are being used, right? I mean, for us in B2B, it's LinkedIn and Twitter. On the B2C side, you have TikTok and now there's like this new platform called Triller, who knows where that will go. So, you know, we constantly keep an eye on those things to see what we can learn from that.